Previously on the tower, we met the architect who showed us how 600 years ago they used rubber bricks to make special ornate features. And we also showed how we used stitching to repair large structural cracks in the building. Welcome back, it's 2018, it's January, it's freezing and it's grey and it's horrible, but we're here. I'm going to show you what's been happening the last few weeks since you went to the tower. Remember, back in the summer, we're a bit worried about the amount of cash we had and whether we'd have enough money to do the roof. Well, English Heritage, good old English Heritage, they come up with some extra money for us and the lads have been on fixing the roof. They put the first timbers on and then there's the steels to go on later, but we'll go and have a look. Other things we've been doing, put some stone on the corner, and actually there's a few jobs around the place we can go and have a look at. These chaps here are laying a road for us because last week the crane came and it got stuck in the soft ground. So what they do, they put down this mat and then the big yellow crane, 35 tonne, gonna come in here, we can get on with the job. Seriously exciting moment. This is the steelwork. We can now build a roof on top of that. I've been waiting for this for so long. <sighs> really good. Well chuffed today. What happens with the steel, it spans from this side of the building to the far side of the building. And it allows us to put the roof on the top, the timbers, the joists. And then one day in the future, we ever get any money, we can take bits of the roof off and we put a glass panel all the way down the building and it looked really light and bright inside. It'd be really brilliant. So we've finished all the brickwork to the Merlons, except for these corners here. You can't really do that in bricks. So what we're going to do is get a, a piece of stone. We're going to cut a piece of stone in there. And that's all right because down below, the corbel below has got a piece of stone. So it matches up and it'd be a really smart finish. Uh, they've actually ordered the stone, so it could be here any day. One of the details we were having problems with is what happened to the brickwork on this corner. What we didn't want to do is cut little tiny pieces and stuck them in. So we come up with this lovely piece of stone, and each corner's got this beautiful piece of stone. And it's the exact problem they had 600 years ago, because down there, they solved it exactly the same way. This is the hatch, the staircase below gets us onto the roof. And the way the roof works is it drains gently to either side and we have these big gutters around the outside here. Not particularly happy that these gutters haven't got the metal sheets on them yet because that means the wood, the plywood is exposed to the weather. That's never a good thing. Just to show you how this roof works, these guys put the timbers there. It's quite a shallow pitch. We've got steels down either side like this. And the idea is when we put the sheet on at the moment, it'll be very dark down inside. But in the future, we can come along and we can remove this row of steel sheets and put some glass and light will just flood the building below. It's very good. If we don't do it now, we'd never be able to afford it later. It's been really frustrating. It's been about six weeks since we were last at the tower. The weather's been appalling. But here today, the lads are working and they're making the box gutters. And they're called box gutters because, well, actually, they're made in boxes, as simple as that. And they're lined, and they're lined here with stainless steel. Now, traditionally, you would have made it with lead. The problem with lead is people pinch it. They don't pinch stainless steel. And stainless steel lasts just as long. It takes a little bit more skill. And Paul down here, we're going to watch him to see how he does it.
How does it work? Well, it's freezing now. How does it get enough heat? It's the same as if we're soldering a copper pipe. Once it, once the heat gets into the two materials. Yeah. And it, it's basically by capillary. All right, so you're actually getting capillary yeah, in there. The, the, so the, the, the actual joint is not out here. It's underneath the... It's in between. All oh, right, so this line isn't like a gap. No. That's, that's irrelevant, really. That's, yeah, that's just the edge of your metal. So you have to cover all the laps. Yeah. So, so no, because you're, what you're actually doing is making a waterproof seal. Yeah. We're inside now on the middle floor, and you see it's quite dark in here. That's because of the scaffold up above. But when they put the roof on, it'll get even darker, and that's the idea of putting this glass panel of light down the centre of the roof. And the light should then flood down here. And we have this fantastic room. And this is like a, a grand hall almost, but we could make it a lounge, a living room. Over there, there's a big fireplace. And up there, there's a landing. So we could sort of build a half a floor with a bedroom up there. They're all ideas at the moment, but we're getting close to having to decide what we're going to do with the future of the tower. It's getting quite exciting, really. We're down here in the, uh, the basement or the ground floor. We haven't been down here for ages. And actually this was the key to the whole of this project going ahead. We put in here this scaffold because this beautiful barrel vaulted ceiling. We had to put this scaffold up because the ceiling was collapsing. Bricks were falling out. And once one brick falls out, very quickly all the bricks fall out. So we put in this scaffold to hold it up. And then above, when the contractors came in, they put their scaffold on top of this ceiling here. It's not really strong enough. And that's one of the problems we had with the scaffold. That's why we had to change it and amend it. Once we're down here in the basement or the ground floor, let's have a look at this. This is a fireplace. This fireplace goes up through the wall, the flue goes up through the wall, all the way up to the roof. Remember we kept looking at that chimney? Remember the birds were nesting in there? Well, this is it. It's in perfect condition. All we need to do is rebuild the fireplace itself. There would be something really ornate here. We can do that, we can get this fire going again. It'd be really good. We had hoped the money would go far enough so that we could repair the ceiling. Unfortunately, it hasn't. So this is one of the victims. This is one of the things that's going to be left over to another day. The sad thing about it is, because it's not really safe, it does mean we're not allowed to let members of the public in to see the tower. And that's a really horrible thing after all this time. But we will get there, just the timescale has changed. <laughs>